Hi there, in this uh, video I'm going to talk about uh, what is a data center. So the idea of this video is really to explain uh, to uh, my uh, students uh, where the data are stored. Because in fact, uh, when you host data within a drive or when you have um, a website or when you use a service in order to build a website, well, let's say you never know in fact where uh, your data are located. In fact, your data are located on servers and uh, server are within something which is called a data center. So um, I'm going to show here um, a website, which is the one of uh, Google showing the different data centers. Of course, that's Google, so that's not, uh, let's say, 100% uh, open source, but it gives you um, a good idea of how big uh, the infrastructure are where you are delivering, um, let's say, services for the, the planet, let's say, for the full um, for, for, for many, many um, people. So here, as you can see, uh, you have the website of, uh, of Google, which is clearly showing uh, the different machines, so the different server that they have. And uh, they have a full website, in fact, explaining you what are the different roles within a, within a data center in order to build uh, the facilities and uh, everything that they need to take into consideration, which is about how to make uh, the machine less heating and, and that kind of thing. Um, you have, of course, other examples. If you look for a crypto mining um, data center, you will see the, the same thing. As you can see here, this is the data center of uh, Genesis uh, Mining, which is mining uh, cryptocurrencies. And as you can see, uh, there's a lot of uh, machine. Most of the time, they add to it uh, the, the job of uh, the, the people who are here in order to uh, maintain uh, the different uh, the different server and um, yeah you have as well you can look for Amazon and you will see that every big players out there uh, providing cloud will have a website showing what is their uh, data center um, what I will uh, explain as well in a couple of minutes is uh, how I build up my own uh, my own data center and um, I will try to explain you a little bit more what are those offers that you see um, from web hosting platform which have their own data center so here i took the one about ovh so as you can see here in ovh in fact they are offering you different plans in order to host your website in fact what they are trying to tell you here is according to the money that you are ready to spend on their service they will offer you uh, a better machine okay and that's um that's the part that i wanted to stress on here because when you go for a service, uh, you go, in fact, uh, for a data center and for the machine, which are uh, within this uh, given data center. So here, for example, if you go for the personal plan, which costs about um, 149 per month uh, in, um, in OVH, they will give you a machine which will be 100 gigabyte. Uh, the hard disk use is a HDD uh, shared hosting. Uh, you will have that amount of um emails uh, here you will get one database which is of 200 megabyte and in fact the more you pay so for example if you go for the the performance plan as you can see uh, they start to give you a bit more information about uh, the kind of technology that they will use and they clearly uh, tell you in fact that it's going to be at least a machine which has a cpu uh, which has uh, one vcore and they will have at least um ram which is of two uh, gigabyte. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to show you my own uh, data center. So I'm going to do it uh, like this. So here is uh, my data center. As you can see, it's composed of uh, different cards. In fact, each of those cards is um, a Raspberry Pi. So here, what it means is that actually I could technically uh, host uh, four different uh, websites. Each of them will be fully isolated. Uh, so of course it will ensure uh, performance and uh, security so that's really good but i can also in fact through what we call uh, virtual machines or even within the same uh, machine i could even split or divide uh, the memory in order to allow uh, different customers to be hosted on this given machine and then other clients on this given machine and so on and so forth um, so i think that this uh, given data center at least this given ar uh, architecture is kind of interesting for uh, for peer uh, to have at home because it clearly helps you understand uh, all the challenges that you need to have when you manage your own data center so in fact each card uh, represents a different uh, computer actually one of those cards is worth 
25 euros or something like that. As what I really like with Raspberry Pi is that uh, you don't have any extra stuff delivered with it exactly like uh, for a server. So uh, you are on your own in order to find out a mouse, in order to find out the keyboard and so on and so forth. And uh, it's really close to what uh, really a server configuration is. Um, okay, so in order to have a data center, as you can see, you need uh, several things. So you need electricity, which is brought by those uh, given cable that you can see uh, here. So of course, then after you need to have enough wires in order to uh, plug uh, enough electricity to your data center. If I got uh, no electricity for a specific amount of time, I need as well to have a battery running in order to put energy within those uh, Raspberry Pi in order to ensure that my service is still going on. Um, then, as you can see, I get a wire for the screen here. Uh, that's a bit unusual. Normally, you will hardly ever access um, to your uh, Raspberry Pi directly by using a screen. Most of the time, you will connect in SSH. I will show you that in a minute. And then, uh, as you can see, you get the internet, which is brought by those cables and thanks uh, to a switch uh, that you can see uh, over here. So this given component that you can see here uh, it has some extra uh, cable uh, which are here and this is the main internet connection and then it's making uh, the link between this main internet connection with all the other internet connection in order to ensure that uh, all my cards are having uh, the internet connection just to let you know the first one i did not plug it in so that's why there's no wire so it's not working but for the all three which are here um, I can um, I can connect to them. They are uh, fully connected. So here, as you can see, I get my uh, my cable on uh, um, linked to the screen. So it means that uh, the current screen that you have uh, over here, you see this uh, given uh, screen here, is the one uh, which is uh, linked with the Raspberry Pi. But in fact. Uh, when you have your own data center, you are in fact uh, far away for, from this given um, uh, data center. So you access it uh, from, uh, you access it remotely. And this is what I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm moving back now to my uh, main uh, screen. And in fact, you connect to this data center. So this is my, uh, my laptop. And from my laptop, in fact, I will connect through uh, SSH. So typically, all I need to do is just to know what is the um, what is the IP address of uh, one of my Raspberry Pi. So in my case, I'm going to type like this uh, SSH. I'm going to give the username of my Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to indicate to which IP address I want to connect. So typically here, what I'm doing is I'm saying, OK, I want to connect remotely to one of those Raspberry Pi and in order to do so, I will use the user account, which is Pi, which corresponds to the user account to this uh, Raspberry Pi I want to connect and then to the IP address uh, by which it is identified on the network. In my case, it's uh, one, uh, 192, 168 and 1.54. So now I can try to connect and then um, I'm going to say yes okay and now I'm okay so I need to insert my password and now I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi so as you can see I don't need to access it uh, by plugging an HDMI cable in fact just remotely I can access to this given machine and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through this machine okay so I see that they have a desktop and I'm going to write some uh, some just some file in order to to ensure that uh, floss marketing school for example floss marketing uh, school uh, okay and then i'm gonna enter within this floss marketing school i'm just gonna create um, like um, yeah like a fake file uh, so i'm gonna couch index.html okay i'm gonna create just uh, um, uh, a file which is named index.html and now if I move back physically to my uh, screen so as I'm uh, showing it to you right now so I'm sorry I just need to switch back to my oops, I just need now to switch back to my uh, to my camera and here as you can see I now have one given oops, one given folder which is over here 
and if I double click on it, I get a file which is named index.html. And that's everything uh, that I wanted to show you about uh, this uh, given data center. So that's the possibility for you to have some machines uh, within your home on which you can deploy some website, uh, hosting files, and so on and so forth. You just need to let your data center all the time connected uh, to your home. So of course, you'll have some responsibilities such as, okay, uh, let's hope that it's not going to burn. Uh, let's hope that uh, the electricity will still be on in order for the services uh, to be still uh, going on. And, uh, and so on and so forth. But just to let you know, you can always access to it remotely as far as you have an internet connection. And this is exactly the kind of service that web hosting provider are going to provide you. Hope you enjoyed uh, this video and that this helps you understand a little bit more what is a data center. Thanks for watching.